I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're talking about today is gut health, specifically, how do you know you have a problem, which we covered in the first part of the show, which is on the website, drjoe.com. And now we're talking about what to do about it, okay? And the big thing we, we kind of teased you with in the beginning of the show was enzymes. Enzymes are the thing that make everything happen. Enzymes for digestion, it's different types of enzymes. Enzymes for digestion are important to avoid illness. And this is why, I, you know, everybody's talking about, we've got to get tested for this disease, that disease. Is it this virus? Is it that virus? I get it. But I don't know of many people aside from us that are talking about what can I do to take care of myself. In fact, I uh, covered for a friend of mine, Eric Von Hessler. I did that last week. I covered his show. And we did a show on comorbidities. What can I do to prevent myself from getting sick? Because most people, if they get a virus, don't die from the virus. They die from other issues that complicate the situation. And the virus is the thing that pushes them over the edge. So what can we do about these other things? A lot of them, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, inflammatory reactions. So your lifestyle has a lot to do with this. And so it isn't a thing. It's keeping your body healthy. And enzymes are going to be a key to get the body working more efficiently. And again, we did that show on comorbidities. I mean, the website lit up, WSB lit up. Uh, we, it was just so popular. Um, and because we covered a different audience, you guys already listened to us a lot. But um, on, the web, on our website, drjoe.com, we have about 1,500 hours of audio and video sh- uh, podcasts and lectures and shows. Uh, so you can really go down a rabbit hole and see what everybody else is seeing too at drjoe.com. So digestive enzymes act as a catalyst in speeding up specific life-preserving chemical reactions. They make the chemical reactions work. <clears throat> Excuse me. They break down larger molecules into easy absorbed smaller molecules, which you need in order to survive and actually to thrive. So some of the things might happen, but the enzymes make it happen faster. And as we get older, things don't work like they used to. And so the enzymes can really help tremendously. So enzymes are catalysts that enable molecules to change from one form into another. Digestive enzymes are, the definition is enzymes that are used in the digestive system. These enzymes help break down large macromolecules, macro meaning big, big molecules found in food into smaller molecules in your gut so you're capable of absorbing them and that supports gut health and it makes the nutrients be able to be delivered to the body. So they break things down. They dissolve them down to their little tiny particles. Digestive enzymes are basically three classes. Proteolytic enzymes, you need to digest protein. Lipase, needed to digest fat. And amylase, which is digest carbohydrates. And there's different ones under each category there. So amylase is found in the saliva and the pancreatic juices. And it works to break down large starch molecules uh, into smaller ones. You need to break down these molecules, starchy sugars uh, that are prevalent in basically all foods. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains. Now your body... Even if you're eating absolutely no external carbohydrates, let's assume you're eating meat, okay, which I don't think you should, by the way. Your body will then take the meat, send it to the liver, and and go through a process called gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis, gluco meaning glucose, sugar, neo meaning new, and genesis means creation. So we're creating new sugar. So if you're not putting sugar into your body, your body knows how important sugar is, again, healthy sugars, and it'll create its own through a process called gluconeogenesis. Enzymes are necessary to make gluconeogenesis happen. Enzymes are necessary to make everything happen. So you need to get those enzymes where they need to be. Pepsin, these break down proteins. Lipase break down fats. And again, we can go on and on. There's subsets of all of those. I don't want to bore you too much. Cellulase is, uh, breaks down cellulose. Cellulose is the, uh, the, the cell wall around vegetables. Now, uh, it helps digest high-fiber foods like broccoli, asparagus, beans, uh, When you're breaking down the cellulose, though, it can cause a lot of gas. So some people say when they switch to a vegetarian or plant-based diet, they get really gassy. That's your body just getting used to it and creating new enzymes. Once your body gets used to it, that problem goes away, which is kind of cool. Lactase breaks down lactose, which is sugar. Sucrase breaks down sugar uh, 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 into glucose molecules. So digestive enzymes aren't just beneficial. They're the reason you're alive. 
They turn complex food into smaller compounds, including amino acids, fatty acids, cholesterol, simple sugars, nucleic acids, which help with your DNA. And the enzymes are synthesized and secreted in different parts of the body. Your spit, your stomach, uh, your pancreas, your small intestine. Uh, the, uh, the pancreas produces so many different things. In fact, the pancreas, you think of the pancreas as producing uh, insulin for diabetics, and it does. It does a real good job. The islets of Langerhorn produce insulin. However, the pancreas also produces uh, uh, protease, amylase, and lipase to help break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And it also produces something that essentially is baking soda. So you eat something, and your stomach is very high in acid, and it breaks the proteins into amino acids. And then this acid slurry passes into your small intestine. If you didn't have your pancreas to produce this bicarbonate, this is baking soda, the acid would just eat a hole in your, in your, in your small intestine, and you would die over time. The bicarbonate neutralizes the acids immediately. So that's why pancreatic cancer can be so deadly because the pancreas is doing so many different things. And if you overstress the pancreas, the pancreas will actually get bigger. Now, the body is amazing in so many different ways. And again, the research we have is we're just brushing the surface on how the body works. But any organ that's under stress will ha naturally get bigger. The thyroid gland, you might get a goiter. Why? You're not getting enough iodine. So your thyroid gland is working too hard. Pancreas, pancreatitis, the pancreas swells up. The heart, my father had a bad heart because uh, he had a rheumatic fever as a child and he never had it taken care of properly. So the infection went from his uh, body into his heart and caused his mitral valve to start to fail. So as in his, I guess he was in his 40s maybe, 30s, whatever it was, uh, he had to have a mitral valve replaced, surgery. Again, surgery is great, saved my father's life. But if you look at an x-ray of my father's heart, it was about three times the size of a normal heart because the heart gets bigger trying to do its job more effectively. The thyroid, most organs will get bigger, okay? The spleen will get bigger because it's not capable of doing what it's supposed to do and it's trying to keep you alive. All we're trying to do is keep you alive, man. And if you're messing up by you eating a lot of cooked foods, depleting your enzyme stores, killing off the bacteria in your colon, well, eventually you're gonna lose this battle. The body's trying and you're messing with it so that's why you don't want to eat a lot of sugars and processed foods and antibiotics if you can avoid them, uh, and chlorinated water and even meats and dairy products with antibiotics in them, even low doses, because they slowly start to kill off the bacteria in your colon. If you're eating a lot of cooked foods, if you're eating nothing but cooked foods, how many people eat nothing but cooked foods? A lot of you do. If you're eating nothing but cooked foods, your body has to take enzymes, it has to produce enzymes to break down the food. If you're eating raw food, we're going to get to that in just a second. Raw food have enzymes in them. So the raw food is actually digesting itself. It's breaking the foods down itself, and that takes the stress off your body. And that's the key. We want to reduce stress, right? Chemical, men mental, and physical stress. We talked about that earlier. But you can take the chemical stress away by eating more raw foods and d doing supplements like Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source loaded with enzymes. Plus, it's a prebiotic and a probiotic and, and a multivitamin, and it, it's fruits and vegetables, and it alkalizes the system and omega-3 fatty acids. So if you're not doing Super Greens and Essential Source yet, you should be, by the way. But whenever I eat a cooked meal, I take a Dr. Joe's digestive enzyme capsule. Because the digestive enzymes then help my body break the food down more efficiently, kind of like it did when I was young. Because I was young, my body produced a lot of enzymes. As I'm getting older, my enzyme levels are dropping. I simply fix that by taking a digestive enzyme supplement. How, I can't make it easier and less expensive for you folks. And all those are on the website, drjoe.com. So without the enzymes, uh, you need to be supplementing. It even works for pets. It's pretty amazing. When you start giving digestive enzymes to pets, uh, there are several benefits to digestive enzymes for dogs, digestive enzymes for cats, other animals, because they're eating what? Cooked food always. If you ever watch a dog when they're sick, what do they do? They want to go out and eat grass. They know innately that they got to get some enzymes in their body by eating raw foods, and that's grass. So giving your animal raw food is not a bad idea, and then giving them digestive enzymes, and they have them specifically made for dogs and cats, um, but you can also give them Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I've had a lot of people give their pets uh, Super Greens and Essential Source and see amazing results, and you can also give them uh, Dr. Joe's Digestive Enzymes. So we're not the only ones that are going to benefit from enzymes. So without them, we couldn't process food, our brain wouldn't work, we couldn't metabolize anything, and we would be dead. So that being said, there's three main reasons why people should take digestive enzyme supplements. 
Help treat things like leaky gut syndromes, uh, celiac disease, take the stress off the digestive system. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, celiac, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, super greens an essential source, the easy absorb nutrients, <coughs> excuse me, and the enzymes. That's absolute. Assist the body in breaking down difficult to digest proteins and sugars like gluten, casein, and lactose. You shouldn't be eating gluten, casein, and lactose. Casein is a protein found in dairy products. Lactose is a sugar found in dairy products. And gluten is found in wheat, barley, and rye. You shouldn't be eating them. Now, you can have lactase milk, which has the enzyme lactase in it to break down a lactose, or you cannot drink milk. Because even if you have a lactose intolerance, it says casein. And we don't have the enzymes to break down casein, so that's something you shouldn't be doing anyway. I don't recommend you do dairy products ever. Uh, you can do coconut milk, almond milk. There's vegan cheeses. There's vegan butters. Everything in the dairy world has a vegan substitute for it. So you don't have to worry about that. So um, you can take the enzymes if you're having trouble digesting something, but if it's something you shouldn't be eating anyway, <clears throat> just don't eat it. Now, whenever I eat a cooked meal, I take digestive enzymes. Because uh, my body, again, it helps it break it down. And if you have trouble with beans or uh, sauerkraut or cabbages that give you a lot of gas, always take a digestive enzymes with it. I think you'll be very happy with the results and people around you will too. Greatly improves your symptoms of acid reflux and irritable bowel syndrome. But again, you need to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm along with the enzymes to help with the acid reflux. Because if you read the directions on these acid reflux medications, they did a show on this not long ago on uh, 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 PPIs, proton pump inhibitors. If you read the directions, they clearly say only take for about two weeks. How many people take their acid reflux medication for years, decades? It's not going to solve the problem. As enzymes might, again, I'm not saying come off your medication without your doctor's permission, but if you take digestive enzymes, many times that helps the problem and then come see us so we can fix the cause. Not just treat the symptom, treat the cause as well. We'd love to help you with that as well. It can enhance uh, nutrition absorption and prevent nutritional deficiencies. Again, if you're getting older, cooked foods, stress, obesity, diseases, you probably want to be taking digestive enzymes. And now there are certain uh, enzymes in foods like peanuts, wheat germ, egg whites, nuts, seeds, uh, beans, potatoes that have something called protease inhibitors. That's what beans have. Protease inhibitors inhibit protease, the enzyme that breaks down protein, from doing its job. So the proteins can actually uh, 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 rot in your gut. It's called putrefaction. So the proteins can putrefy in your gut, and that can cause a lot of uh, gas. So uh, plants kind of like have a way to protect themselves, and we can override that by simply taking an enzyme to break down those protease inhibitors and allow you to digest the food more efficiently. See, there's no downside to this, folks. That's what I'm getting at. It's pretty cool. And if you take a bottle of it, yeah, there's a downside. But if you take a digestive enzyme with your meal... I don't know of anybody having any problems with that. So you may be the first one in the world, but I doubt it. Now, you may be wondering, digestive enzymes can help you lose weight, burn fat, help with constipation. If you're not make, making enough digestive enzymes to help di digest and process and uh, make your body work properly, it's possible you experience some constipation that can be improved with digestive enzymes. Most times, constipation is not enough water, not enough plant fiber. You know, that's redundant, plant fiber, because you can't get fiber from animals. So when you get people on a good plant-based diet, it works. Now, we do have a supplement on the website, drjoe.com, and it's Dr. Joe's intestinal formula. So if you do have constipation, I recommend you try that. What I recommend, people take one the first day, see how you do. If everything's working fine, one is your number. If not, take two the next day, three the next day, four the next day. Don't take more than four. I had a patient take 12 one time. She was not happy. Um, it worked. Uh, drink a lot more water, and then if it's still not working, you could uh, and you can try the enzyme, the the colon, uh, uh, the colon intestinal formula, but you want to get to the cause of the constipation. Increase your fiber. It could be a pinch nerve in your low back. The nerves in the low back control the colon, so many times a pinch nerve in the low back can contribute to constipation. Spasms in the colon. Many times we have to go in there and physically adjust the colon to get it working again. Uh, but if you ha do have constipation, enzymes might help. But Dr. Joe's intestinal form, you really would be where you want to go until we come in to see us so we can get to the cause of the problem. Uh, is it linked to weight loss? Not really. Uh, it may help lower inflammation and help you reach a healthier weight. So digestive enzymes and weight loss are not necessarily from the enzymes working, um, but many times you're digesting your food more efficiently, so you start to eat better, and that can help with the weight loss. So don't think you're going to take enzymes and start dropping pounds. No. 
Now, intestinal formula, you may clean out your colon and you might lose 10 to 15 pounds right away, but that's not really going to uh, solve the problem. It's just built up junk in your colon that we're flushing out. So just so you know, uh, I've had people do that, get their bowels working properly. They're thrilled. Dr. Joe, I lost 10 pounds right away and then it stopped. Well, all we do is clean out your gut. Now we got to get into the real get, getting rid of the fat. So best source of enzymes, raw fruits and vegetables, of course. They contain enzymes that help for dige aid in digestion. Pineapple, papaya, apples, many other plants contain beneficial enzymes, pretty much anything raw, but those, those that I just listed have higher levels. But when these foods are grown in depleted soils, they're highly processed, they're not organic, they're sprayed with chemicals, the enzymes are either destroyed or they're lacking. So yes, an organic pineapple might be great, but if you eat a pineapple, it's been sitting on a shelf for too long, and then it's been canned and heated. And heat destroys enzymes, by the way. Anything above 110 degrees is going to destroy the enzymes. So if you have the, most, the healthiest raw papaya in the world and you heat it above 110 degrees, <clears throat> the enzymes are gone. So that's why you might want to consider taking enzymes as a supplement as well, even if you're eating a lot of raw food. But if the raw food is depleted or not organic, you might be having some problems. So... I do recommend the digestive enzymes. And what I tell people too is if you're taking a supplement, chances are you're not going to see an immediate result. If I have a headache, I take acetaminophen, my headache goes away. Half hour, boom, I know it worked. But with health, you have to rebuild your health. You have to recolonate your colon with bacteria. That's why the probiotics take a while to work because a lot of the probiotics, when you take them, are going to be killed in your stomach. It's like the first wave coming in and the snipers are waiting for it because the stomach acid can kill uh, the probiotics, they're bacteria, which are proteins. So some of it has to work its way into the colon. Then eating more fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds give you what's called prebiotics. Prebiotics make it past the stomach no problem, and they feed the bacteria that are already present in your gut. So now we're feeding the bacteria so they're healthy, so they can reproduce and make more baby bacteria. So prebiotics and probiotics, it may take some time, a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of days, to start seeing some changes. So don't think you're going to take it one day and so it didn't help. Same thing with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Most people see a, a change, have more energy, they feel better, they sleep better, go to the bathroom better in about two or three days. Some people it takes longer. Don't jump ship on a supplement because you took it once and it didn't work. It takes time to build these things up in the body. And that's why they're supplements. They supplement a good diet. They're not instead of a good diet, they're in addition to a good diet. So probiotics, awesome. People say, well, Dr. Joe, what about yogurt? Yogurt always brags about probiotics. Well, what happens is they make the yogurt, they test the probiotic levels, and chances are it's true. However, what happens is then we have to pasteurize that yogurt. In most, I know in Georgia we have to. Pasteurize that, and that kills off a lot of the probiotics. Then they put it in a container. Then they ship it, and then it may be heated up when it was shipping. Then it goes to the grocery store, and it sits on a the shelf. Then you take it home. It sits in your refrigerator. As time goes on, those probiotic levels are dropping dramatically. And yogurt, if you make it yourself, you can make coconut yogurt or almond yogurt by yourself. Uh, that's the way to do it. But very high in calories if it's sweetened yogurt. Look at a little container of yogurt, tiny little container of yogurt, 200, 300 calories. It's crazy. So if you're going to do yogurt, you want to do plain yogurt. Of course, no dairy yogurt. You can do almond yogurt, coconut yogurt, soy yogurt. Um, but it's better. I wouldn't rely on that as a source of probiotics because we really don't know what the level is when you're taking it. That's why Dr. Joe's probiotics, it's in a capsule form, and once it hits water, it rehydrates itself. Once it gets into the colon, it comes alive again. Uh, and the super green is the essential source, same thing, prebiotics and probiotics. So there's digestive enzymes, which are in the stomach, and then the pancreatic enzymes, which we talked about. So pancreatic enzymes you usually lend in the uh, letters IN, trypsin, pepsin. That means it's coming from the pancreas. If it ends in ASE or OSE, they're digestive enzymes. They come from the digest stomach and the digestive system. So really not important to you where they come from, but it's just a little fun fact. IN, pancreas, OSE, or AAC, ASE, um, means they're coming from the digestive system. So how do you know if you should be taking enzymes? Gosh, this show goes so fast. I got so much more to cover. How do you know if you should be taking enzymes or not? If you're lacking specific enzymes, they're needed to break down certain nutrients. We talked about that, sugars, uh, proteins. And you may experience the gas, the bloating, the diarrhea, the constipation. But many times, those symptoms are due to just a poor diet. So if you're eating alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, enzymes will probably help. There's no problem with taking them. 
However, it's getting to the symptom, not getting to the cause. The cause would be eating a better diet, eating more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So symptoms that may mean you need digestive enzymes, acid reflux, cravings for certain foods, thyroid problems, heartburn, indigestion, burping, hair that's thinning and falling out. A lot of people come to me with that. It could be the enzymes affecting the thyroid, which can be affecting the hair growth. Drier, weak skin, thin skins, trouble concentrating, brain fog, morning fatigue, trouble sleeping well, arthritis, joint pain, muscle weakness, feeling exhausted after working out or exercising, mood swings, depression, irritability, headaches, and PMS symptoms. These are all symptoms when I see them, I'll say, you know what, maybe we really should be getting this person on digestive enzymes. So we give you a bottle of Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes, take them religiously two, three times a day for a month. Let's see what happens. Chances are you're going to be very, very happy with the results, and you'll be like most of our patients and say, why didn't I do this sooner? And that's a big question. Now, as a chiropractor and a pain management expert, nutritional expert, we get a lot of patients in with pain. So when you come to our office, we want to do a chiropractic and neurological uh, and musculoskeletal evaluation, see if there's anything physical wrong. We want to do a nutritional evaluation to make sure you're eating the right foods. We, want to, we look at your symptoms that you, you come in with, of course. Um, we want to check your digestive system to see if there's anything physically wrong that we can work on. In many cases, there is. And then we start out. This is the protocol we're going to start with. Then we get you on some supplements, get you on some dietary changes if we need to. And then we reevaluate. Right around 10 visits or so, my staff, the doctors will usually say, how's the patient doing? Well, maybe they need a further evaluation. Maybe they need a medical evaluation. You can send us to our medical doctor who works on staff. And maybe we can do a PRP, which again, uh, platelet-rich, uh, platelet-rich plasma, which is going to get uh, help growth factors. We're going to inject them right into the body to help bring down inflammation, help the healing process occur. Um, many, many stories about uh, discs getting thicker, spine, the knee, uh, big knee issues. If you have a knee issue, folks, PRP usually is your godsend. You're going to be happy with that. And then if we need to, we can go further from there still. But we like to start out and build up and go from there. We don't like to just jump in and say, yeah, you got a torn uh, rotator cuff, you need surgery. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And most people, I don't know anyone who doesn't, says, listen, let's try to conservative approach first. If it doesn't work, we could always go a little you know, more uh, in depth, uh, more aggressive maybe is the word I'm looking for. So let's try to heal it naturally. And that's what most of the patients come to us for. Doc, I really don't want to take more medication. I don't want surgery. I can't afford surgery. Uh, many people need surgery, and their insurance companies deny it anyway. They are, I mean, I see these cases come in, and I'll say, you know what? This is a surgical case. I'll send you out to a neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon. And the insurance company say, no, you don't need it. Okay, so you got my opinion. you got the neurosurgeon's opinion. you got the orthopedic surgeon's opinion. And some insurance adjuster is saying, no, we're not going to pay for this. Anybody ever have that experience with your insurance company? Raise your hands. So take care of yourself is what I'm getting at. If you take care of yourself, if you get the nervous system working, digestive system working, good nutrition, the chances drop dramatically that you'll ever get to that end point. And if you do get to that end point, then there are more aggressive options. But many people that I see, and again, maybe I just see the people that don't get good results come to me and say, gosh, I wish I never had that surgery. Now, sometimes you need it. I'm not against the surgery, but every day patients come to me and say, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd come here first. So if you want to make an appointment, if you have health issues, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, my doctors are amazing. We have Dr. Pam, Dr. Irwin, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Kat, Dr. Martini. Um, We've got some great doctors. Dr. Amy's our clinic director. We've got some who I feel some of the best doctors in the world. And the reason I say that is they're my doctors. I can go anywhere in the world for healthcare, and I go to my doctors because they're handpicked by me, trained by me, and I trust them with me. So we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Make an appointment now. Stop suffering needlessly. DrJoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. You can book it right online. You can call us if you have questions. The initial visit is usually $375, $375. We've reduced that through the COVID issue to $149. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays, nutritional evaluation on a second visit. And then for future care, most people need future care. We accept most insurances. We have uh, prepaid payment plans. We have uh, financing available. And if you're ever in a car accident, ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged, you need to see us immediately. DrJoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. 
You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on WSBRadio.com and on a WSB Radio app.